Hi, this is Mr. Max. So I am doing mixed questions on uh, arithmetic and geometric progression. All right, so about three questions. So you should refer back to the formula how to find uh, T sub N, the S sub N of AP and the GP. Right, so let's get to it. So we've got the first question here says the A term of an AP is 150 and the 50th term is negative 30. So this is a, a arithmetic progression. So we're supposed to find the first term in a common difference and then the B part we're supposed to determine the number of terms whose sum is zero. So the moment you talk about sum we see that sigma there. All right, so what we have is the 8th term is 150 and then the 50th term is negative 30. So I used my formula T sub n for an arithmetic progression. And I know that when the 8th term is there, we have a plus 8 minus 1 in brackets times the common difference equals to 150. And the same applies for the 50. So when you clean this up, you get a plus 7d is 150. So that would be the first term or the first equation rather, and a plus 49d is equal to negative 30, and this can be my second equation. So what I'll do is I'll solve them simultaneously by simply subtracting equation 1 minus equation 2, all right? So that means the a eliminate because the coefficients is 1, so I'll get 7 minus 49 is minus 42d, and 150 minus negative 30 is the same as 150 plus 30, which is 180. So the common difference there is negative 30 over 7. So I'm leaving it then as an improper fraction. So I'm substituting this negative 30 over 7 into equation 2 or equation 1. It's totally up to you. So I substitute equation 1 and I'll get the value that A is 180. So you get the same if you were to substitute negative 30 over 7 into the second equation. Right, the B but the B part to this question. So let me bring back my value of A and my value of D. So we are supposed to determine the number of terms whose sum is zero. So S sub N comes in play here. All right, so what is the formula? S sub N is N over 2, and then in brackets we have 2A plus N minus 1 times D. But remember, we have A and we have D now. And we also know we are looking for the value of N. All right, that equals to zero. So if I substitute into my formula, this is what I should get. And when you clean this up a little bit here, all right, you will definitely realize that um, you're going to get 360 plus 30 over 7 minus 30 over 7. And you clean it further, all right, you have got 360 plus 30 over 7 gives you 2,550 over 7. All right, so then I obviously remove the brackets, so or I first write that two terms, the two terms inside the bracket is one, and then I remove the brackets, okay, by multiplying the N with each one of that. Multiplying throughout by 7, 0 times 7 obviously gives you only 2,550n minus 30n squared equals to 0. So this is a quadratic, but I have two terms, so I can take out a common factor of 30n, and 30n equals to 0. n will be 0 for a value, or 85 minus n is equal to 0, minus n is equal to negative 85, and then n is equal to 85. So hence the two solutions is n equals 0 or n equals to 85. All right, so let's go to the second question. So this is a GP, first term is 6, common difference is 1.5. So I'm writing my A as 6, which represents my first term, and R is 1.5. So the sum, smallest number of terms, which must be added. So added tells me I must use the sum, S sub N. All right, exceed means can be more than 10,000. Okay, so S sub N, well, you can use any one of the two formula. When the ratio is bigger than 1.5 or 1, like this case, the ratio is 1.5, it's advisable that you use this, but ultimately it doesn't matter. This one is advisable if the ratio is obviously less than 1. And R cannot equal to 1. Okay, so using this particular part, substituting it for A and for R, Okay, then I play around, 1.5 minus 1 is 0 0.5, then I'm going to say 6 divided by 0 0.5, that gives me the 12 there, and then I divide that 12 into the 10,000, alright, 
and I'm going to clean that up. So that is going to give me 2,500 over 3. That is 10,000 over 12. And this minus 1, if I add it on both sides, is going to be giving me that. Now, once I'm here, you're looking for the index, so you have to use logarithms. All right? So when you clean up that right-hand side, you get 2,503 over 3. Right, so I'm going to take log both sides. So when I do that, I'll take log 1.5 and, all right, greater than log of that stuff inside bracket. Now I'm going to get rid of this n times the log of 1.5. Now, if the log was a fraction like 0 0.2 or 0 0.5, the inequality sign would have changed. Very important that you remember that. Okay, or simply use your calculator and see what is log 1.5 giving you. It's giving you a negative value. If that is the case, the inequality sign should change around in order for the inequality to remain the same. But I know that the log of 1.5 is going to be positive. Suppose it was 0. Point something, 0. 0.8, obviously you would have changed it around. Good. So punch it in correctly on your calculator. You should get n is representing a number which is greater than 16.58. So the number greater than 16.5 should be 17. Therefore, the 17th term is the one, the smallest number of terms, which must be added. 17 of them should be added so that the sum exceeds 10,000. Okay, so question three. Again, you have an AP or an arithmetic series. That means you are adding. is such that the ninth term is zero. The sum of the first 25 terms is 50. Find the first term of the series and the common difference. Again, some sort of simultaneous equation. So let me see what do I have. I have the ninth term is equal to 0. I also know it's arithmetic. Okay, so if I use T sub n, I can get an equation of a plus a d equals to 0. And the sum of the first 25 terms is 50. So if I use S sub n, I get 25 over 2 and uh, 2a plus 24d equals to 50. Well, I clean this up here, I'm going to eventually end up with an equation a plus 12d equals to 2. So now I have got two equations, 1 and 2 here, which I'm going to solve simultaneously. And I've decided to subtract equation 1 from equation 2. Ultimately, it doesn't matter which way around you go. The a is eliminated, leaving with 4d equals to 2. Therefore, d is equal to half, which is 2 over 4, which is equal to 1 half. So once you have one value, you take that d, you substitute it in any one of the first two equations. So I substitute in equation 2, a half of 12 is 6, and a will be 2 minus 6, and the value of a is negative 4. Right, so remember to subscribe to the channel and also to click the notification bell. And also, if this video was a bit too fast, pause it, go back, revisit, and find out the formulas are to find, find the t sub n, the nth term of an arithmetic progression, the nth term of a geometric progression, the same with the s sub n, the sum of the nth term of a series, sum of a series, whenever you're adding the terms alike. There are going to be further videos that I'm going to upload on arithmetic and geometric progressions in future.